untap your full potential with the untapped deck tracker. Both the in-game overlay and the personal stats provide a lot of value. Download it for free today using the link below and you'll be supporting the channel at the same time. Hello and welcome to another Historic Brawl games video. Today we're taking a look at a green-white plus one plus one counter synergy deck as voted on by my supporters on Patreon, featuring Hamza, Guardian of Arashin as her commander, the 6 mana 5-5 five five legendary elephant warrior, costs 1 generic mana less to cast for each creature we control with a plus one plus one counter on it, and then once Hamza's in play, creature spells we cast also cost 1 generic mana less to cast for each creature we control with a plus one counter on it. So Hamza synergizes very nicely with these various X casting cost creatures, which we can play early to enable Hamza so we can play it at a discount, and then later will greatly benefit from the discount as we'll be able to sink even more mana into them to make them even larger. Then taking a look at the rest of the deck, of course, most of our creatures will have some sort of plus one counter synergy, starting out at one mana with Esper Sentinel, which will let us draw a card whenever the opponent casts a non-creature spell, unless they pay a tax equal to its power, so if we put additional counters onto the Sentinel, we also increase its tax. Then there's Star Pupil, which comes into play with a plus one counter on it, and when it dies we can put its counters onto target creature we control, and very similar in green as Servant of the Scale. Then we've got Ascendant Pack Leader, a 2-1, that comes into play with a plus one counter if we control a permanent with mana value 4 or greater, and whenever we cast a spell with mana value 4 or greater, we can also put a counter on it. Then there's Lanor Elves for Acceleration. Pelt Collector will pick up a plus one counter whenever a bigger creature comes into play or dies, and will eventually gain Trample as well. Then we've got Swarm Shambler, which also comes into play with a counter on it. We can pay a mana tap it to put an additional counter on it, and whenever a creature we control with a counter on it becomes the target of a spell an opponent controls, we get to generate a 1-1 green insect creature token. Then we get to the X casting cost creatures, with Stone Cold Serpent and Ugin's Conjurant, which we can potentially play for X equals 1 early on. And then we've got Mikaeus the Lunark, which can potentially distribute a whole bunch of counters to the entire team. Then there's the Contortionist Troop, which with Coven can also put an extra counter on one of our creatures each turn. Feral Hydra can pay 3 mana to put an extra counter on it. There's Hungering Hydra, which cannot be blocked by more than one creature. And when it is dealt damage, we get to put that many plus one counters on it. There's Ochre Jelly, which when it dies splits into additional Ochre Jellies. We've got the Wildwood Scourge, which also picks up additional counters whenever a plus one plus one counter is placed on a non-Hydra creature we control, and our next Hydra has Reinforce, so we can also use it as a comma trick to put X plus one plus one counters on target creature, and also has Reach. Then at 2 mana we've got the Luminarch Aspirant, nerfed with Alchemy, it's still quite powerful, as it can put a plus one counter on one of our creatures at the beginning of our end step. The Dusk Shell Crawler will enter the battlefield and put a counter on one of our creatures, and then each creature we control with a counter on it has Trample. We've got Incubation Druid, which is an O2 that can tap for 1 mana, and then if it has a counter on it, which we can produce thanks to Adapt for 5 mana, we can put 3 counters on it, then it will add 3 mana instead, but of course we have plenty of other ways of putting counters on the Incubation Druid, so it can tap for 3 mana. The Seed Sculptor is a 1-2 that can put a counter somewhere when it enters. Nessian Horn Beetle, a 2-2 creature, saying at the beginning of combat, if we control a creature with power 4 or greater, we can put a plus 1 counter on it. Pollen Bride Druid, a 1-1 that can either put a plus 1 counter on target creature, or we get to proliferate, so we can choose any number of permanents that have counters on them, and place an additional one of those counters on that permanent. There's the Wildborn Preserver, a 2-2 with Flash and Reach, and whenever another non-human creature enters a battlefield under our control, we can pay X mana and put X plus 1 plus 1 counters on the Preserver. Conclave Mentor, one of the better creatures in the deck, as it will make it so whenever a plus 1 counter is placed on one of our creatures, we can put an additional plus 1 counter on that creature instead, and when it dies we also gain life equal to its power. The Monoskeleon is a 1-1 one -one that enters with a plus 1 counter on it, and we can pay 1 mana to remove a counter and deal 1 damage to any target, so we can potentially play it for free if we have Hamza out, and at least 2 creatures with plus 1 counters on them. And then we've got some more X casting cost creatures, with the Steel Bane Hydra, that can be used to destroy artifacts and enchantments by removing counters from it, and Voracious Hydra, that can either double its counters when it enters, or we can potentially fight target creature we don't control, and it also has built-in trample. Then at 3 mana, Absan Falconer will make it so all our creatures with counters on them have flying, so very powerful evasive ability. Then Fertilit comes into play with 2 counters on it, and we can pay 2 mana, remove 1 counter to search up a land and put it on the battlefield tapped. 
There's Oren Reef Ooze, which also comes into play putting a counter somewhere. And when it attacks, we get to put a plus one plus one counter on each attacking creature with a plus one plus one counter on it. Rishkar comes into play and can distribute two plus one counters, and each creature we control that has a counter on it can tap to add green mana so we can help ramp out even bigger stuff. There's Scurry Oak, a 1-2 with Evolve, so whenever a bigger creature comes into play, we can put a plus one plus one counter on it, and whenever one or more plus one counters are put on Scurry Oak, we can create a 1-1 green squirrel creature token. Champion of Lambhold is a 1-1, and whenever another creature enters a battlefield under our control, we can put a plus one counter on it, and creatures with power less than Champion of Lambhold's power cannot block creatures we control, so another powerful evasive ability. Knight of Autumn can come into play, destroy an artifact or enchantment, or maybe pick up two plus one plus one counters. Then at four mana we've got Basri's Lieutenant, which also comes into play and places a counter somewhere, has Vigilance and Protection from Multicolored, and when the Lieutenant or another creature we control dies, if it had a plus one counter on it, we get to create a 2-2 White Knight creature token with Vigilance, so it gives us a bit of sweeper insurance. There's Shalai Voice of Plenty, giving other creatures we control and ourselves hexproof, and for six mana we can put a plus one plus one counter on each creature we control, so very powerful mana sync. And Armorcraft Judge is a 3-3 that when it enters lets us draw a card for each creature we control with a plus one plus one counter on it, so a nice way to refuel. Then at 5 mana, Verger's Gearhulk is a 4-4 Trampler that can distribute 4 plus one plus one counters among creatures we control. Biogenic Ooze, a 2-2 creature joined by a 2-2 green Ooze creature token, and at the beginning of our end step, we put a plus one plus one counter on each Ooze we control, and for 4 mana we can generate an additional 2-2 Ooze token. There's Iridescent Horn Beetle, a 3-4, saying at the beginning of our end step, create a 1-1 green insect creature token for each plus one plus one counter we've put on the creatures we control this turn, so it can also get out of hand. And then at 6 mana, there's the Averbrook Caretaker, a 4-4 with Hexproof, saying at the beginning of combat on our turn, put two plus one plus one counters on another target creature we control, and on the Nightbound side, it will put two plus one counters on each creature we control instead. There's the Primordial Sage, a 4-5, saying whenever we cast a creature spell we may draw a card, so similar to the Beast Whisper, which we could also play at 4 mana, but hopefully with the Hamza discount it's better to run the sturdier Primordial Sage instead. Then there's a Vorinclex Monstrous Raider as well, a 6-6 Trampler with Haste, which will essentially double our counters while halving the opponent's counters as well. Then taking a look at our non-creature spells, at one mana we've got a bit of removal with Swords to Plowshares and Blizzard Brawl, which is why we're playing all these snow-covered basics. Then Hardened Scales is similar to the Conclave Mentor in enchantment form. Snakeskin Veil can give one of our creatures hexproof until end of turn and put a counter on it. And Vastwood Fortification can also put a counter on our creature or can be played as a tapped land. And Animation Module, a 1 mana artifact, saying whenever a counter is placed on one of our permanents, we can pay 1 mana, and if we do we get to create a 1-1 one, one colorless servo artifact creature token. And for 3 mana we can tap it to put an extra counter on one of our permanents, which will potentially also trigger the first ability. Also applies to loyalty counters on Planeswalkers, by the way. Then at 2 mana there's Arcane Signets and Emergent Sequence for ramp, which will also result in an extra creature with plus 1 counters on it. Dromokus Command can be a fight spell, which also puts a counter on one of our creatures, or maybe makes the opponent sacrifice an enchantment, can also save our creatures from a damage-based sweeper. And at 3 mana there's a Branching Evolution, which will double the number of plus 1 counters placed on our creatures. Inspiring Call an instant that lets us draw a card for each creature we control with a plus 1 counter on it, and those creatures also gain indestructible until end of turn, so another way to save our creatures from a sweeper. There's the Wild Crafter, which will make our creatures with plus 1 counters on them tap for mana, and we can minus 1 to put an extra counter on one of our creatures. Then at 4 mana there's a Blessing of Frost, another snow card that distributes X plus 1 counters among creatures we control equal to the amount of snow mana spent to cast it, and then we get to draw a card for each creature we control with power 4 or greater. There's Ajani the Great Hearted, giving our creatures vigilance and can minus 2 to put a plus 1 plus 1 counter on each creature we control, and a loyalty counter on each other planeswalker we control, and Nissa, who shakes the world, can generate some 3-3 three, three creatures with plus 1 counters on them, and will potentially double the amount of green mana we can produce, which is also very powerful with all those X casting cost creatures. And then topping off our curve, we've got Sigardas Summons from Crimson Vow, saying creatures we control with plus 1 counters on them have a base, power and toughness 4-4, four, four, and have flying, and are angels in addition to their other types, so it can be a great finisher. And then the Great Henge, speaking of greats, is an awesome card draw engine, letting us 
this draw card whenever a creature enters a battlefield and putting a plus one counter on it and can tap to produce double green and gain two life and gets a nice discount equal to the greatest power among creatures we control so we can often cast it around turn five and then our mana base is pretty straightforward, lots of snow-covered basics, and then some dual lands for fixing, and our utility lands include Crawling Barons, which can turn into a creature with plus one counters on it, and we've got Karn's Bastion, which can pay four mana, tap to proliferate, to once again add more counters to the team. So that's our deck, now let's jump into some games and see how the deck does. Alright, we're on the draw, facing the Godzilla deck, and my hand's fine. Bit of ramp with emergence sequence to maybe get a second white source for summons. And then hopefully pick up some extra creatures with plus one counters on them. Maybe a way to evolve the scurry oak. Animation module's not bad, but for now probably hardened skills. And then we can play the module once we have more mana to sink into the ability. Opponent with a dowsing dagger. Gives me some plants. We'll get a planes. And we get the extra counter from hardened scales. Our opponent with the hinterland chef from alchemy can find one of these different creatures. Okay, so what's next? I can potentially play a Scurry Oak, followed by a Servant, which will enter with two counters on it, so it would evolve, which will then also pick up extra counters. That seems reasonable. Although I do have to tap my mana properly. Make a Squirrel. And then I can play Hamza for pretty cheap next turn. Chef attacks. I'll jump with a plant. And our opponent can give a trample, fair enough. So if the dagger transforms. And now can make three mana, so that was a powerful turn. Transformation on the Scurry Oak at least keeps its counters, so actually got a little bit bigger in the process. And the goose is what the chef found earlier. Okay. So where do we want to start? I could play a Champion of Lambholds. Or I could go for Hamza first, plus maybe animation module. Although if I play champion plus animation module this turn, then next turn the champion will pick up counters when we play Hamza, which is maybe better. There's also Voracious Hydra as an option, but there's nothing I really need to fight right now. So this seems fine. And then Scurry Oak could attack. Don't really care if this hits me at this point. And uh, I guess the Servant attacks as well. So next turn I could play Hamza, which puts a counter on Champion, can pay for Animation Module, which will grow the Champion once again. And that's fine. And eventually Sigarda Summons will end the game. 3-3 three, three attacks, I'll take it. Okay. So I think we stick to the plan. Play Hamza. Grow Champion, pay the one. And Grow Champion once again. Already up to a 5-5. Five, five. But no attacks for now. 
And now with Hamza in play, it's going to be much more beneficial to play our various Hydras. Alright, the Taunting Arbor Mage can force a block here. So everyone has to block Godzilla. And we're probably going to lose Champion of Lampholds in the process. Hopefully there's no additional pump spell. Right, at least Godzilla died in the process. So we're still in reasonable shape. Arcane Signets. So what's the next move? I could maybe go Arcane Signets, play a Feral Hydra, and just use it with the Hamza discount, and then pay the one for Animation Module to make an extra 1-1 token, just to help me go wide, and then keep Voracious Hydra for later. And then there's a chance I can play Sigarda Summons next turn, which seems decent. So I guess 1, 2, 3 can make it 4, and then still pay the 1 for Animation Module. And I don't think I need to attack here. Happy to keep things as they are. And an untapped land would give us Sigarda summons next turn. With some very large creatures to fly over. Nylea's not bad. Will make it difficult to attack on the ground. So definitely need the Sigarda summons to stick around. The goose is tapped at least, so no reach or flying creature on the opponent's side of the battlefield, despite Nylea wielding an enormous bow. So this should be lethal. Alright, sweet. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the play, facing a Tesseret Master of the Bridge, so an artifact deck. And my hand is... A little slow to get started, but I do like Fortification putting a counter on Incubation Druid to maybe make some extra mana. So I'll try it. Probably want to start by fetching with Fabled Passage for a forest. And then turn two Druids. Turn three Fortification on the Druids so I can cast a Branching Evolution plus maybe something else. Could go Arcane Signets, Fortification, and then Evolution. Or now, I guess, Wildcrafter putting a counter on Druid also works. Although, that requires an untapped land, which I found. So is that to play? Wildcrafter. Put a counter on Druid's Branching Evolution. Yeah, I guess that's fine. Assuming this resolves. Gets negated. Fair enough. So we'll just pass. And then I can still go for fortification on the incubation druid here. And I want to cast it now. So we've got a bit more mana next turn. And a Primordial Sage will be a nice one to ramp out. Could already cast it now if I wanted to. Also don't mind going Signet into Branching Evolution so I can double spell. Or maybe Signet into Hamza, also an option. And if this gets countered I'm not too upset. Alright. So next turn can try and resolve Primordial Sage. It 
Dark Ritual scary. Five mana for a key to the archive to ramp out. Third Tesseract, perhaps. And find another powerful card from the spellbook. Okay. So... Probably time for Primordial Sage here. Doesn't leave enough mana for anything else. But I want to keep the creatures for after Primordial Sage, so I think that's the play. And hope it doesn't get removed. Godfarer's Statue makes my stuff more expensive. So that's problematic. So I could start with Champion. Although that's not going to leave much mana to cast anything else afterwards. So maybe then I'm better off casting a Hydra. Or getting the Branching Evolution down, but then I don't get to draw. So maybe it is still Champion here. Land is good. Time Warp for an extra turn. Although luckily they didn't have any active Planeswalkers in play yet. Palladio Mirror, we can maybe fight with our Hydra. And Asper Sentinel would have been nice last turn. So Hydra, I could play for X equals 2, fight the Mirror, and hopefully draw land for Asper Sentinel. That checks out. Alright, perfect. Would have been nice to have an active branching evolution in play, but hopefully we don't face a sweeper and we can keep up the pressure here. Meteor Golem goes for Primordial Sage. Ooh, Inspiring Call could be huge. So what's next? Could play branching evolution. Could play Hamza first too. If I play Hamza, I get a three mana discount on my creatures. Still have three mana. Could also try and keep up Inspiring Call, but feels like I need to apply a bit more pressure first. So if I go for Hamza, I can play Hungering Hydra for three. I miss out on the branching evolution value, but that's probably fine. And these all get to attack, thanks to Champion of Lamhold preventing the meter golem from blocking. And our opponent concedes, awesome, so battle through some counter spells, a time warp, and a god statue making our spells more expensive, while Auron's Epiphany was waiting in the wings, but we still got there in the end. Sweet, on to the next one. Alright, we're on the draw, facing old stick fingers, typically a reanimation deck, and sadly I ended up cutting Scavenging Ooze as one of the last cuts, which would be quite effective in this matchup, but my hand's still okay. Plenty of plus one counters to start out, can apply a lot of pressure with a Jani. Turn to Talisman to maybe find a reanimation spell. Probably play a Rishkar next turn. Stick fingers for one, puts in Cultivator Colossus. Okay. So maybe their deck is just all lanes, and this Cultivator's Colossus is gonna wreck me.
talisman goes digging. And we gain control of it, so if I had a scavenging ooze here, I could actually deal with the Colossus. Can't really think of any other graveyard hate in the deck. But playing Nissa is also pretty decent here. So if I were to play Nissa, probably want to fetch for a forests. Can maybe have a quick look through the deck to see if there's anything I would want to search up with the Talisman. But nothing really comes to mind. Can maybe eventually get like a Falconer to fly over. There are a few options. There's Source to Plowshares as an answer to. So we'll play Nissa, And then probably no point in attacking and I would rather develop my mana a little bit more. And in fact I can play Hamza after attacking for three. And then still play Incubation Druid. So that was still a pretty good turn, but I'm scared of what might come next. Bond of Revival, uh-oh. Gives the Colossus haste. So... Yeah, if their deck is all lands, we might just be dead here. Yeah, the haste on Colossus... Makes me regret not just getting a source to plowshares. But their deck can't all be lands now, can it? Well, they're certainly making it look like it. All right, just a 25-25, no big deal. So at least I'll be able to find an answer for Colossus. Uh, or I might find a way to actually present lethal next turn. So I have to block with something here. Uh, do I need Incubation Druid? Probably not. What's my plan though? I can use Talisman. Maybe find something to add some power and toughness. But, uh, yeah, this is interesting. So what about if I get like a branching evolution and then play a Jani, add a whole bunch of counters to my team? Is that the play? I mean, it definitely involves Talisman. Would a Sigarda Summons be good enough? Let's see. So, 7 plus another 6, 13. Plus 5 is 18. Plus 5 is 23. So, I guess Sigarda Summons would do it if I can cast it without tapping any creatures. Could maybe go for Hardened Scales or Branching Evolution to then double my counters. So we do have quite a few options, but let's go with the Branching Evolution, sure. And in case you were wondering, it doesn't matter if we play Branching Evolution before or after plusing Nissa, because the land's not a creature yet when we add those 3 plus 1 counters to it. Play a Jani. And smash. Alright, so our opponent definitely scared me for a second, but we got there in the end. On to the next one.
Okay, we're on the draw, facing Kenrith, the Returned King, powerful five-color deck. And my hand's okay, assuming I can pick up some lands, including white mana. And we're on the draw, so I'll try it. Hardened Scales into Wildwood Scourge. And then we've got more ways to grow it afterwards. There's the Plains, excellent. Turn to Thomatic Compass. And we'll follow up with a Wildwood Scourge. Then we might see Champion of Lamphold on three. As opposed to the troop, so we can keep that until after we play Hamza. And maybe next turn a Jani. Rishkar's also tempting. So if I were to play Rishkar, and I put counter on Rishkar, counter on champion, then I can also play Hamza. We're going all in, so if our opponent has a sweeper, we're going to be incredibly sad. But it's a pretty cool play. So that might be worth it. Opponent activates Compass. So we get a ton of extra counters here. These all tap for mana. So we can play Hamza, or I could just smash for 13. Yeah, I guess playing Hamza might be a little greedy. Could have simply played a Jani and minused. Also would have been quite good. Alright, looks like that was good enough. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the play, facing off against a Runo Stromkirk deck, and my hand's okay. Sentinel to punish some non-creature spells, sequence for ramp to try and get Hamza down, followed by a Vorinclex. And should be able to find some creatures to fill the gap in our curve. Supplier mills some big sea serpents. And this means we're gonna fetch up an extra forest here. The wall for more mill. Alright, did not find what I was hoping for. I can still cycle. Scattered Groves, and then probably keep White Man untapped. Another land. Okay, just pass it back, and then next turn, Nissa seems like a powerful option. Runo can put one of those sea monsters back, and even found an Icebreaker Kraken, so. Opponent's deck is operating at full capacity. And we'll pass. So Runo transforms. Now they still need to get the big sea creature in play. So they might need some other reanimation effects to really leverage the Lord of the Deep. Nissa takes three. And now we've got an interesting turn ahead of us. So I probably want to play Vorinclax before plusing Nissa so it gets additional loyalty. And then we can still play Hamza. For 3 mana. And smash. Uh, 
and then I could still play a Steelbane Hydra. So this is 4 mana plus a 3 mana discount. So X equals 5. And we'll enter with 10 counters thanks to Vorinclex. So not a bad turn. And then our opponent agrees. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the play facing Delina, Wild Mage. And my hand's acceptable. Got some interaction for Delina, and then turn to Mentor quite powerful if it can survive. Boots of Speed makes a lot of sense with Delina. Gonna cross our fingers here that Mentor doesn't get removed. Alright, Mindstone instead. So don't quite have to keep up Sword Supply shares. And then for now. Maybe go for Hungering Hydra for two. We'll have three counters and I can wait for the troop. Now it's probably not a disaster if Delina hits us once. Since they would need to get pretty lucky to actually kill us. So it might still be worth it to add an extra creature to the board. Alright, Heated Debates deals with Conclave Mentor, sadly. Champion the draw. So, don't want to play a Johnny yet since we only have the one creature out. So, could go for Contortionist Troop for three. Although then again, Troop is better after we play Hamza. So maybe there is an argument for just going champion, keep up source to plowshares. And hit for three. And then if I pick up a land, maybe go for Hamza next turn and then Troop. Or maybe next turn a Jani if we don't draw the land. Can add some counters to the team. And it's convenient that we get to keep up swords. And then once we have Hamza in play, the troop becomes much more appealing. Alright, there's Delina. Can wait for them to equip the boots. And then responsible swords so they don't gain the extra life from the boots. So that turn was pretty good for us. Found a land. So I can play Hamza now. And our opponent has seen enough. Alright, on to the next one. Alright, we're on the play, facing a Sathron Minotaur deck. And my hand seems acceptable. Tromoka's Command for a bit of interaction. As well as Voracious Hydra, so we're good against other creature strategies. And turn to Aspirants. Despite the nerf, still pretty decent. Hopefully they don't have too much spot removal so we can get Hamza down. Especially if we can play Hamza and then a cheap armor craft judge can be quite explosive. But Aspirant gets eliminated sadly. In that case, can play a Crawler, put a counter on itself. Or I could make a slightly larger Voracious Hydra, but there's nothing I want to fight. Visionary 2-1 with Prowess. Land is good. So now I don't mind the Hydra fighting Visionary. Next turn, play Hamza, and then we can start emptying our hand. Alright, opponent abrades Hydra to deny Hamza. And a cast down, okay. Well, that does make our armor craft judge a little bit less exciting. 
Promocus Command could still provide a counter. And maybe find something. And Sathron seems like a good target for it. So... That would be my entire turn. Dromocus commands, fights, put a counter on Horn Beetle. But it would let me cast Hamza next turn. The alternative is Blessing of Frost for three counters. Would also make three insects in the process. And then next turn I can still play Hamza. Yeah, I'm not too worried about Sethron, so I think that's maybe better here. And a mentor is not bad. And then could also attack. Sure, I think we can be aggressive. And Dust Speaker, another Minotaur, makes a 2-3 in the process. Alright, might have to take out Sethron before they make too many 2-3s. And a triple block is fine. But now we can combine Command with Conclave Mentor to get a bit more value. There's Pollen Bright Druids as well. So quite a few options. But I think Mentor into Dromocus Command is going to be the play. If I go for Pollen Bright Druids, then it's easier to play Hamza next turn, as we get an extra discount. But the Mentor doesn't really benefit from Hamza getting a discount, so... I don't think that matters. And then I could attack with Horn Beetle first. Do I mind if Dust Speaker attacks? Probably don't want a Dust Speaker to attack and provide free card advantage here. So we'll leave the Horn Beetle back. And then a fight and a counter. And get some more insects. Skull Cleaver, that's fine. And Dust Speaker attacks in the hopes of finding some goodies. Can block here, even with Double Strike. And uh, put some insects in front of the Skull Cleaver. That seems okay, and then they're probably gonna give this Double Strike. But if that's their turn, I'm happy. Right, trades happen. And a Blood Rage Brawler to play. Well, I commend my opponent for committing to the Minotaur Tribal theme. Okay. So now we could have a more explosive turn. Pull and Bride Druids, put a counter somewhere. Hamza costs four mana, and then. Next turn I can go for the Armorcraft Judge. And could put counter on Mentor, still doesn't attack past Brawler. So maybe put it on the Insect. Although, do I want to trade when we have an Armorcraft Judge in hand? Probably not. And our opponent has seen enough. Alright, so on to the next one. All right, we're on the play, facing a Jacob Hawken deck, and my hand's acceptable. Missing some form of interaction, so I wouldn't be able to fight Jacob, which is scary if it transforms. One of our best cards would be like a Dromoka's Command, which can either fight Jacob or make them sacrifice their enchantment. But we get to kick things off with an Aspirant here. Probably would have played a Stone Coil for one just to let me play a turn three Hamza. Looks like they have a bounce spell here. Alright, next turn I guess I'll be able to play Stone Coil alongside Luminarch. Or I could play a Champion of Lampholt first. So if I go Serpent Luminarch, 
Next turn I can play Hamza for 4 mana. Which might be worth it, actually. Alright, key to the Archive for ramp. So they might be skipping their commander here and just start hard casting their big blue spells. The various mass bound spells like River's Rebuke are quite problematic for our deck, so hopefully we don't have to face those types of cards. And then I can put a count from Hamza, so we get an extra 1 mana discount. So big turn coming up. Can they deal with my board? Do I get to untap with Hamza? And what did they find off key to the archive? Probably won't be good for me. Alright, Jacob. Do they also have a time warp? Demonic tutor instead. Okay, so three mana left. Maybe a bounce spell for Hamza. Maybe something expensive to play for free next turn. Or maybe a counter spell. Guardian Idol. Alrighty, so probably want to kick things off with Champion of Lambholds. And then I can play Falconer, play a one mana Horn Beetle. And I would get two insects end of turn. The alternative is Falconer, Fallen Bright Root could proliferate. And then Horn Beetle gets a few more insects. I think I prefer the champion line. Gives our team flying. Possible that our opponent got a reverse rebuke too here. So, not expecting this to go well, but uh, We've got a couple insects, which also grow the Champion of Lamphold. So we're in a good position, assuming we can keep everything in play. So what's the free spell? Omniscience? Uh-oh. Four cards in hand. Commence to draw two, that's still okay. See, get Restoration, gets to draw a ton of cards, so our opponent's comboing off here. Alright, so what's next? The boon to draw four. Just gotta dodge a mass bounce spell here. Archive can draw two. But our opponent can still cast all those spells for free, so... Don't think we're winning this game. Unless they drew all lands and ramp artifacts. Counter spells are also fine. Alright, there's a creature, Ornithopter. All creatures that cannot block. So I could play Polymbride Root, could be bad if our opponent has one of those counter spell draw card type cards. But I guess I might as well. Alright, gets counter spell, that's fine. And I'll turn the team sideways. And hopefully we don't see a bounce spell on champion. Opponent bounces Falconer, that's fine, still have champion making the team unblockable. So maybe an oversight from our opponents, and we stole the win. Wow, can't believe it after opponent drew more than 10 cards with Omniscience in play. So yeah, our Hamza deck put up some pretty good numbers. Champion of Lampholds, Nissa were some of the standout cards for sure, but there's a lot of powerful plus one counter synergy cards printed over the years, so definitely a deck that will improve over time as more cards are added to the game. But of course also a deck that's very vulnerable to sweeper effects, so won't necessarily be able to compete with the top tier decks of the format. 
And we're also approaching 100,000 subscribers on YouTube. So if you haven't subscribed yet, make sure to do so. I've got something special planned when we reach that milestone. But for now, I want to thank you for watching. Hope you enjoyed. And as always, have a nice day. I also want to thank all my patrons for being part of the channel. And you can become a patron yourself today and decide the topic of future videos over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd.